Hello and welcome again, my friends. Welcome to the third lesson in our series. Now, for those of you that are new to this channel or new to the lessons and are eager to start learning, I uh, firstly strongly advise you pop into lesson one, followed by lesson two first, as otherwise some of this might seem just a tad complicated or confusing. For those of you uh, that have already taken, the first two lessons are right where you should be really, so welcome again. Now before we jump in, a small reminder to keep this between us dwarves. Now that we've got that out of the way, boy am I glad to see you all again. It has been far too long yet again. Granted, I've been busy with many things that should make the lives of eager Neo Kuzul students just a bit more enjoyable, I hope, such as the translation tool or the Neo Kuzul plugin for Lotro. But that has meant this lesson has gotten a bit sidetracked, I'm afraid. Feel free to check out uh, those new tools uh, on the blog, which is dwaroscholar.com, or have a look at the introduction videos of these. Now, lesson three. Here we are at last, so let's jump in. For this lesson, we'll be focusing on two core concepts. One is the transitive perfect uh, form, while the other is the disrespectful form. More on that in detail later. And while we do that, of course, we'll be visiting our uh, three dwarven girls again. I wonder what they're up to now. Well, let's have a listen. Nam, umkame uglakul. Nan nanara, ratari rabahais ditisi. Itmi tu pakama kaki. Nara nexi dos tum akag, nanar kama adati. Kazut buhu felakun srafer nan nar medanu. Nima karmu adatma hektu zul mezara udu bakam zun. Kun ra irak adatma bekaza undum bakazum ra ya gedu. Ranada de Hanafa, Rasiki nada de Telaka udu bakamzun. Bizrul galik. Hiktu zul galik dasuk mazar mamata slabi. Filin, kun akak ma. Izum jal zirak brori. Gulub mi anatana. Yam adra makba dahum. Sirjam ma, siraja al nur udu ur. Zirak brori, izum jal kasam hili. Mata ma, si. Yadi akak ma zirak filin. Kuf te sak benin ramazur ma. Filin, agak ma. Ku esik me, zin me, ra zina me. Tari, iz hid magam lanzi. Lu, amma ze. Besen men ni alabakam, ra mek men miz mal. Tada men mat. Egel ma ni akzar, megel ma mat. Zirak broi, tada men mat. Kiazra! Me sem mi zai ma ma zamana. Uzbatwali zakalata ala. Natana felbominin adranma. Bin razmul, karama ma muzum. Kasam hili buha, akulma ni ba. Iklipi mate asafartata. Tesek minin ya akragma. Ratesek man ya adranma ra adranmu up kamma. Kulu, kesra! Zaman stafi, not ni bakam zu gagin. Ah, nam hal, mah bakamin mabak bulash kad mezun ze. Zur turume. Inkir broi. Zibar shagamin ala. Buru shruka in bulun e natana. Banu muzum zirak prori rana tatu, makahunit kalitamu ni bakamma. Tari kematai ni aksar. Right, loads of conversations at what seemed lightning speed. Let's take it step by step, shall we, and dissect each line as we review it. In case you're wondering, there's quite a bit of conversation in this third lesson, uh, quite a bit more than in the two earlier lessons. There are a few reasons for that. Firstly, we'll be reviewing a bit of content from the first lesson. And secondly, we've come to lesson three, so let's not shy away from a bit of pace. 
And lastly, obviously, the uh, conversations contain quite a few examples of the topics we'll be looking at for the third lesson. Talking about topics, before we start to review each line in more detail, let's have a look at our two points of learning today. Firstly, we'll be looking at the transitive perfect form. Now, all remember the perfect form, right? Right? Well, if not, don't fear. Uh, hop back into lesson one. Review that at your own leisure. Oh, I see you stuck around. Very well. So you uh, know the perfect form then. Uh, brilliant. Well, uh, today we'll look at a variation of this perfect form, which is the transitive perfect form. Let's give a few examples to get us started with this concept. As you recall, the perfect form uses either E, A, U vowels um, for its base, as we see here. So E type perfect form, felic me, I hued, consists of felic, which has E type base vowels, plus the conjugation for the first person singular, which is me. Then A type perfect form, an example there is sharap me, I shaved. So that's sharap, which is the base which is, as you can see, an A type, because both vowels there are uh, A, plus me, which is the conjugation for the first person singular. Then another example is a U type perfect form, which is Yurus me, I crushed, consisting of the uh, vowel Yurus, or the vowel U, rather, um, and the base being Yurus, and then me being the conjugation. In these examples, we are using the first person singular just for ease and convenience. Now, the transitive perfect form is the form we'll use when we talk about dependable, dependable facts concerning the usage of tools or objects. This may seem a bit complicated, but in fact, it's extremely simple. And the construction of this type is very simple as well. Let me prove it. An example of an E type perfect form would be felic me, which means I hued. So we have the base felic. As you can see in E type, it has two E vowels in its base, and then the conjugation for the first person singular, me. If we uh, use the, uh, or have a look at the noun uh, associated uh, with this, um, so I hued, the noun would be a hewer or a chisel, uh, which is felac. And if we want to transform this into our transitive perfect form, as I said, it's in a dependable form related to tools and objects, which means I used a hewer or chisel in this case, um, it would simply become felak me. So we take the base as we see with our noun and we add the conjugation that we saw earlier in the perfect form resulting in felak me. Now, what about another example, shall we? Let's take an A-type perfect form, perhaps. Let's see. So, the noun sherab means a razor. Uh, we see again the uh, consonant E, consonant A, consonant form appear, which is typical for the form uh, for tools. Um, then sharab me is I shaved or I shave or I have shaved. Again, it's important that like the perfect form, this talks about dependable facts, not necessarily about the time at which this happens. So whether this happened in present or past is something you need to deduct from the rest of the sentence. Um, so there will likely be other words which will indicate what time we're talking about as well. Uh, so, sharab me, we have our base sharab, as you can see it's an A-type verb, and then the conjugation me is added. Now, if we want to convert this to the transitive perfect form, we get sherab me. So, instead of sharab me, sherab me, I used a razor. So, basically, by changing this first, uh, or the vowels to E and A, uh, what we do automatically is uh, using the noun with those same consonants. So we had sherab, which was razor. Sherab me is actually a used razor. Like we saw before, felak hewer or chisel. Felak me, I use a hewer, I use a chisel. 
So we basically take the same conjugation pattern that we see in the perfect form and put that onto that noun form. Now, I hope we are seeing pattern emerge here. Uh, let's try the U-type perfect form. So, Yeras is a, uh, a pestle. So, for those that aren't aware uh, or familiar with a pestle, a pestle is a hard tool with a rounded end that is used for pounding or crushing things like herbs, for instance. So, Yuruzmi is I crush. So, as you can see, it's a U-type verb. Then Yerazmi is I used a pestle, which is the transitive perfect form. Now, so it doesn't really matter if it's uh, an E-type or A-type or U-type form. As you can see, it always takes on this uh, E-A vowel construction. Now, see the pattern emerging, I hope. Whatever the word for the tool itself is, you merely need to add the endings that we see or saw in the perfect form, so remember lesson one, to form this transitive perfect form. So, felak is here, we add the perfect en ending, so in this case, for instance, me, uh, making it felak me, which is I use or use a hewer. It's that simple. If I want to say we used a razor, we would take the noun, which is sherab, as we saw earlier in our examples, and add the ending we need for we, which is ma. So giving us sherab ma, which is we used or we use a razor. In other words, to form the transitive perfect form, we take the conjugated perfect form and swap the vowels of the base, regardless if those are a's or e's or u's, with e and a. Easy, right? Now, of course, you should keep in mind that conjugations we've seen uh, when we've discussed the perfect form in lesson one, as you'll obviously need those. So keep in mind, though, that not all verb forms have transitive versions. There obviously needs to be a noun, because uh, otherwise there's nothing that you can use. So not every uh, verb in Kuzul has a transitive perfect form. Now, some of you might be thinking, We've, we get the transitive perfect form, but can you also use this in the imperfect form? The answer is yes, you can. If you aren't talking about dependable facts, but more about vivid actions, the imperfect is always the one to use. The transitive imperfect form is no different. Remember in lesson two, I said that the base vowel of the imperfect is either an A or an I. Well, if you want to use the transitive imperfect form, you simply swap that base vowel, regardless if it's an A or an I, with an E. So, for instance, remember to form the imperfect, we add elements before and after the base, as seen here. So, like we saw also in lesson two. So, felak is hewer. I type in the imperfect. So, let's see if you can remember to form I hew. So, what's our base? Come on. Think back to lesson two. Exactly, that's it. Our base is flick. So F-L-I-K. We form it by taking our radic radicals F-L-K and adding I in between second and third radical. As I said, it's an I type imperfect. So to form the first person singular in the imperfect, we need to add A before the base and I after the base. So there we go. So a flicky. I hew. I am hewing this moment, basically. Now, turning this into the transitive form is absolute child's play. The only thing we need to do is change the vowel which we find in our base. So, in this case, this was an I. So, in the base, flick. So, that was an I. And we change that to an E. So, it would instead of a flicky, I hew, it's a flecky, I use a hewer. I'm using a hewer at this moment. So, as you can see, whatever the vowel is in this base, simply change it to an E and you've got the transitive imperfect form. Another example, using an A type imperfect this time. So, the word hedan means key. So, our base uh, becomes hadan because it's an A type verb. Um, and let's give it a, the the conjugation for like the the male 
uh, second person, so you, male form. So it would we add sa in front of it and I at the end of it. So it's an A type in the imperfect, as we said, hence the A in between second and third radical. So we end up with sahdani, which is uh, you lock. So a hedan is a key. The verb is to lock. Now let's turn it into the transitive imperfect. One, two, three. There we go. Sahdeni. So you, male form, use a key. As you can see, it's very straightforward. If you're unsure about any of these conjugations for perfect or imperfect, go back to lesson one and two. Honestly, you need to have this done before you can jump into transitive perfect or transitive imperfect. For this lesson though, we'll be focusing on the transitive perfect, meaning we'll be magically transforming E, A, and U type perfect forms into forms that look like this. No, Philic me turns into Philic me. Sharap me turns into Sherab me. And Yuruz me turns into Yeraz me. Now, I'll let you in on a little secret, a little trick. The vast majority of perfect forms that support a transitive version, because not all of them do, as we've mentioned, are in fact E-type perfect forms, over 90% of them. In other words, if you can think of a tool, chances are it will have an E-type perfect form. Don't believe me? Well, here's a list. Most of the E-types, here we go. Hold on to your hat, not done yet. There. In fact, it's a lot easier to assume that all tool nouns have an E-type verb perfect form and just remember those that aren't E-types, which is a much shorter list. So there we go. A very easy way to remember when a perfect form is an E-type. We'll get to a way of remembering A and U-types uh, perfect forms in future lessons. But for now, let's focus on the topic of this lesson. So transitive verbs. Let's dive into our conversation again, this time line by line. Nam upkami uglakul. Nana nara ratari rabahaizditisi. Right, it seems we've landed right in the middle of a very large and busy shop, perhaps even a shop located near a busy market, at least by the sounds of it. Our shopkeeper is called Filin, and we hear three girls entering, or at least Filin is very pleased to hear them enter the shop, as he calls them his best customers. Upkame uglakul. Now, having a look at these two words here, it may surprise you, but none of these words are really new to us. You may remember from the previous lesson the radicals BKM, as in Bakama he bought, or GLK, as in Galik, meaning good. An upkam is a customer, or a client, or one who purchases something. So by adding the extended E, so as an A, we get my customer. Now, of course, we aren't talking about one customer, but about three customers. So it's upkam with extended A, indicating the plural, meaning customers. The second word, uklakul, is what is known as an elative form. A form of a superlative, uh, in basically meaning in this case, uh, meaning better or, or best. Remember, I said it is used. Uh, I said it uses the same radicals as the word good. So if galik or good is the standard adjective, by putting these radicals in the following structure, so u consonant consonant a consonant u l, we get better or best. So good turns into better or best. Note that uglakul can be used for both words, either better or best. It all depends on the context, uh, but more on elective forms in a later lesson. 
Right, so let's listen to a bit more of our conversation here, as there's lots more to learn. Note, though, that as usual, I won't be going into full details on the majority of the words seen here. Just those I believe are relative to our lesson now, or those that are useful enough to lift a veil on them, knowing we'll see them in more detail in future. It me do become ma jagin. Oh look, there's that uh, combination of consonants again, B, K, M. Remember, we've used it in Bakama, meaning he bought, but also in Upkam, meaning customer. Well, to be pre precise in the word Upkame, meaning my customers. And now we see it again in Bakama. Now, it is tempting to think that Bakama is just a version of the word we already know, Bakama, meaning he bought. But in fact, Bakama is a noun with a pronoun. So, while bakama is a conjugated verb. So, the noun I'm talking about is the word for shop, uh, which is bakam. And the pronoun here is ma. So, when attached to a noun, ma means our. So, bakam, ma, means our shop. It's extremely important to pronounce both m's in this word. Otherwise, you may indeed be un misunderstood. Nara nexi das tum agag nanarkama adazi? Well, it seems our Nara is a frequent customer indeed, regularly placing orders for her father. Note here, as a reminder of our previous lessons, Adad, meaning father, is combined with Z, which is the female second person singular possessive pronoun. In other words, your, but directed at one female, making it your father. So, Adad Z. Kazut buhu felakun nandar medanun. Oh, well, this is a delicious line, full of things we want to talk about. Well, in the previous line, we glanced at the word nanar, meaning another. We now see the word nanar, meaning others. So again, a clear example why it's very important to pronounce double consonants independently, uh, as the meaning will change if you don't. I know that many have the urge to pronounce words with a double consonant uh, at a quicker pace, reduce, reducing the vowels, like we see in English and in many other languages for that matter. But in Neokuzdul, you really need to ensure you pronounce them separately, like the word homemade, pronouncing both uh, words, both M's in the word. In fact, a simple trick to get this pronunciation right is to mentally cut such words into two words. If you imagine a space between nan and nar, you will in fact almost always pronounce it exactly as you should. So, nan nar, instead of nanar. So as I said, this is a delicious line full of interesting things to talk about. The main course in this line is our first example of transitive perfect forms. The words felakon and medanon. The ending on refers to the third person male or mixed gender plural. So in other words, they. As we've seen, felak is a chisel. And now medan, again using this uh, tool form, um, consonant E, consonant A, consonant, we've seen earlier, uh, is a door. So in other words, they use a ch chisel, they use a door. I'm guessing what una means here is that the dwarves of this company wear down their chisels in no time. Nima karmul, adad mahiktuzul, mezara udu bakamzun. Nimakarmul is a rather fancy variation of the word nibakt, meaning indeed or in fact. A literal translation of nimakarmul is um, in that which is named. So agreeing with that which was named before, basically. So uh, we saw the word uh, adadzi, your father, a minute ago. Now we're seeing the variant adadma, meaning our father. And look, here is another transitive perfect form, this time taking the he form. So, uh, mezara, uh, he uses work tools. Again, we take the uh, tool form mezar, meaning work tool, and add the conjugation uh, we see in the perfect form, which is uh, a in the end, uh, making it he uses a work tool. Now, sharp eyes will no doubt have noticed that the translation actually says work tools, so plural and not the singular work tool. Well, this is a particularity about the transitive forms. The form can be translated as one would be using one tool or many. 
The sentence environments, the surrounding words, if you will, should give you a clear indication whether we are talking about one or more tools. Uh, lastly, we see the word bakam again, which, if you can recall, means shop. This time coupled with our um, second person male or mixed general plural form of your. Now, uh, Nara is using the f this form zun and not zu because she clearly wants to express that the shop is owned or run by both Filin and his wife Una. Uh, this is another advantage of Neokuzdu. You get loads of information through your pronouns that sadly uh, doesn't exist in English, uh, not in that fashion at least, but more on uh, pronouns in much more detail in later lessons. Kun ra irak adama bekaza undum bakazum ra ya gedu. When you first glance at this line, you could be excused for thinking the subject of this line is our father or adadma. Yet the word is irak adadma. Irak meaning side, so literally side father meaning uncle. Bekaza, another transitive perfect form, he uses a hammer, hammer being bekaz. Um, again, as seen earlier, we add the perfect conjugation for the third person male in this case, which is a, making it bekaza. Ranada de hemafa, rasiki nada de telaka udu bakamzun. That went uh, rather fast. Let's uh, hear that again, shall we? Ranada de hemafa, rasiki nada de telaka udu bakamzun. Well, now these girls are just showing off, really. Okay, we get it. Your family is nuts about the tools in the shop. Right. Hinafa and telaka being transitive perfect forms again, hinaf being knife, and telak being a smith hammer. So once again, we add the conjugations we saw in the perfect form, and there you go, the trans transitive perfect form. Here we see some other family relations as well. Uh, sigin adad, or grandfather, literally meaning long father. Incidentally, in English, a somewhat archaic form of the word grandfather is actually also long father. Uh, a word Professor Tolkien himself used, actually, on occasion. Uh, for instance, uh, when uh, Denethor, the steward of Gondor, speaks to the wizard uh, Tarkun, uh, likely better known under his mannish name Gandalf, where he says, I would have things as they were in all my days of my life and in the days of my long fathers before me. So there. Anyway, we are digressing, I apologize. Uh, let's have a look at the next line. Oh, well, in this line, we see a perfect example when one may be tempted to use a transitive form, but in the end, we don't use it. Notice the word mezarma. You, can, you may recall that not too long ago, I said that the transitive perfect form is used to convey the usage of one or more tools, and it's not specifically marked. Uh, here we see the plural mezar, which is the plural of the noun work tool, being mezar, and we add ma to indicate it's our work tools. Now, you know as well that ma is used as a conjugation for the perfect and, of course, also the transitive perfect form to indicate that we are using one or more tools. Um, so we are using one or more tools. Uh, this may often lead to confusion, obviously. For instance, henaf ma could mean our knife, but it could also mean we use a knife. The context will indicate whether we are talking about the noun or the verb. Here, however, in mezarma, there is no doubt at all that we are talking about the noun work tools, seeing that we marked it clearly as a plural mezar instead of mezar, something we would not do with the verb form seeing that it can apply to either one tool or uh, more, as mentioned earlier. So there it always would be mezarma and not mezarma. In short, when we combine the noun, in this case uh, work tool, with a pronoun, in this case ma, we, we can no longer use the transitive form, uh, but are forced to use another form of the verb to use, which is also seen here in the form mataslabi. Now, don't panic if you don't recognize the form matas lobby. It's what is called a passive and perfect form, something we haven't seen before and won't for a long time, so no worries there. Uh, notice, though, the part tas lobby in this word, which is, in fact, the imperfect form um, of the verb to use, meaning it uses or he uses. 
feeling. Kun akak ma. Right, charming. No shamuk or even a friendly smile, it seems. This is the part of the lesson when the dialogue gradually gets rather nasty and somewhat insulting. As you'll see, that the manner in which Brori and his brother conduct themselves is not appreciated by the girls nor the shop owners. And before you know it, these otherwise charming dwarves, for the most part I'm sure, will be using disrespectful forms with each other. Now, this is the second main focus point of this lesson. It must be said though, Tolkien's dwarves are generally very polite indeed, but when they fade into the realm of insults, they tend to do it subtle at first, before breaking out the nasty insults. A perfect way to step on someone's toes without getting a fistful of knuckles in the nose are the usage of disrespectful conjugations. I want to quickly explain to you now how these work so we'll recognize them in the upcoming lines. A classic and I'm sure most well-known example of a disrespectful form can be heard in this line. Baruch Hazad, Khazad Aimenu. Uttered by Gimli during the Battle of the Hornburg, it means axis of the dwarves, the dwarves are upon you. Our focus in this line is the menu part as in I menu, meaning upon you. Now, I hear some of you thinking, wait a minute, we've seen in the previous lessons that you, could, that you can be either zu, zi, astu, asti, and now there's another form. Well, sadly, yes. This is the disrespectful form, in fact. Uh, why be polite when shouting a battle cry, right? It is the perfect setting to use the disrespectful form. You are about to chop someone's head off, so let's forget the pleasantries and courtesies, shall we? Now, the first thing to note here is that the respectful, disrespectful form, rather, is a second-person form exclusively. In other words, you can't use the disrespectful form to talk about a third party that isn't there. That would be downright cowardly. Nor can you obviously insult yourself or the group you belong to. That would be idiotic, as one takes pride in oneself. So, this disrespectful form is not another tense. Uh, so, no need to remember any more of those structures, for now at least. It's just a way of conjugating the verb. So, to make it a bit easier on ourselves, let's compare the conjugation of the perfect form using the polite conjugations with the impolite versions. So, let's see. Let's use a verb we've seen in previous lessons. Here, we see all the polite forms of you study. In the perfect form, to be clear. So, fahansu, you study, the singular male polite form. Fahansi, you study, the singular female polite form. Fahansu and fahansin being the plural versions of that. Now, let's transform these to the impolite, disrespectful, or at times called contemptu contemptuous, rather, uh, versions, which would be fahanme, you study. So, the singular male impolite form. Fahanmeni, or Fahanmeni, rather, you study, the singular female impolite form. Fahanmen being the plural male version, and Fahanmeni being the female plural version. You see what's happening here. The su, si, sun, and sin are in fact replaced by me, many, main, and menin. The imperfect has a similar version, but more on that later. Now, obviously, some verbs like, for instance, to stink may use these disrespectful forms more than the familiar polite ones, uh, yet still it is a form one should be very consciously using. It isn't used among friends nor in jokes, so when you use this you clearly wish to indicate that you have a very low opinion of the one or those that you are addressing. So definitely not a form to use for idle chatter. Right, so with that basic introduction to the disrespectful forms out of the way, let's dive back in to the dialogue of Lesson 3. Izunjal zirak brori, gulubmi anatana. Our shopkeeper seems not pleased with the uh, sudden interruption here by Master Brori and kindly asks him to wait in line. He says, Izul meaning only or just and Jal meaning moment. So Izul Jal, only a moment or just a moment. Well, someone is clearly in a hurry. Uh, Adran is a form uh, meaning time, while Mabak means no, zero, or none. Literally, time zero, or no time at all. 
Now, in the last lesson, we saw the forms lu and ma for no or not. Uh, this is uh, a form used as an adjective, like in no food, no time. Um, and as you may recall, adjectives are almost always placed after the noun they modify. Hence, adran mabak instead of mabak adran. Um, there are other ways of, of expressing um, words as time. Um, gelek being one of them, uh, which is a moment in time. But as the general abstract concept of time is adran. Here we see another transitive perfect form. Sejarma, meaning we use a caravan. The have to in this case is implied. Uh, furthermore, we see the word for today, which is ala nurt, consisting of the elements ala and nurt, literally meaning this day. Um, and we also get to see the, uh, or one of the names used for Erebor. Um, I say one of the names, as there are a few. Urd, which we see here, is the local name used to refer to the mountain itself. Then there is Urdek, which refers to the halls within the Lonely Mountain. And lastly, there is Asalul Abad, which is the more official name used, and not just locally, referring to both the kingdom and the mountain of Erebor. So seeing that Master Brody here uses the word Urd, it is very likely he is a local Ereborian. Zirak Brody is Ujalka Samhili. Ooh, well, it looks like uh, Master uh, Filian here is getting somewhat agitated already. Now, one may not notice directly, as we haven't seen any specific disrespectful forms used so far, though I fear they aren't that far off, but by using Kasamhili, which literally means can you make or can you do, Master Filian is in fact using a rather informal form. Zabira Sakjami being the formal variant of that, would, uh, meaning would you grant, uh, would perhaps be more appropriate normally. Not really impolite, of course, but not something you would expect of a merchant or shopkeeper who would usually address his clientele in the formal polite form. I would say that Master Filin is taking a first step here at informing Master Brody that his behavior is out of line. Incidentally, you can find such idioms and phrases like different ways of saying please in a document available via the DwarvesCaller.com site. A direct link will be in the show notes. Not Clearly, Master Filin isn't the only one who thinks Master Brody is out of line here. You'll notice, though, that in this line we find a textbook example of the verb to be being omitted completely. When one describes something uh, or someone in the present, it is extremely rare to use a variant of to be, unless one really wants to emphasize the state of being, but more on that in later lessons. Nathana meaning uh, maidens and ze meaning first, so literally maidens first, meaning the maidens are first. Nara seems eager to hand in her order, it seems. Here again, we see the verb to be, um, here is our order, being completely omitted as one would expect. And we're off. The first disrespectful form we've seen in our dialogue, uttered by Brody's brother Drori, who sounds like a nasty character, to be honest, or at least a dwarf with a terrible cold. He says, Tesak Benin. Not just any disrespectful form, by the way, but, as you may have noticed, a transitive form. So, tesak being toy, we add the perfect conjugation, in this case the disrespectful version of it, which is menin, uh, used to address a group of females, in this case our three girls. So, we get tesak menin, meaning you use, or play with, in this case, toys. Filin, adakma! Well, it seems Brody and his brother uh, Drori clearly have no intention of waiting their turn. Um, we've seen the word akak uh, now a few times in uh, the lesson, or in the lines of this lesson, rather. Um, it means order, uh, and adding obviously the pronoun ma at the end of it would make it akak ma, or our order. Kuf basic me, zin me, ra zinat me. Tari is clearly not taking this kind of attitude from these two dwarves and points out in the disrespectful manner that their personal hygiene may not be to the best of standards. Here we see besek me, meaning you wash in the perfect form, so not a transitive. Sen me is a rather particular uh, form because it is a transitive form, but based on two consonants or radicals instead of three, which we've seen um, during this lesson. So in such cases, the base vowel will always be 
e uh, making it a senmei. Uh, though we won't focus on biradical verbs just yet, so don't worry about that. And lastly, we see the form zenatme, uh, meaning you use a comb, zenat being a comb. Now, though there are two brothers here, uh, note the fact that uh, Tari is in fact just addressing one of them, seeing that she used the ending me and not main with the N, which as we've seen is the male plural disrespectful. Tari is Hidmagam Lanzi. Now, Nara, who is Tari's very proper elder sister, directly points out to Tari that she must be more polite and mind how she speaks to her elders. The word ishid is the imperative form, an order, if you will, to respect um, a form we'll see in future lessons. The word magamlanzi uh, may seem very unfamiliar at first, but if we look at the radicals of this word, you may notice a familiar combination. Do you remember the word for old, as we've seen in earlier lessons? Yes, exactly. It's gamil, using the radicals G, M, L. Now, the word magamlanzi consists of two main parts, magamlan and zi. Zi is the female version of your, which leaves us with magamlan, which also contains the radicals G, M, L in that order, and it means those that are aged, in other words, the elderly. Incidentally, the word Gamil may seem very familiar to the viewers from Scandinavia, as the word for old in Norse, Danish, Swedish, or Icelandic is indeed very f similar. There is uh, no coincidence here, as Professor Tolkien clearly used Germanic uh, or Old English, uh, the word Gamol as his inspiration for this word. Uh, Dutch speakers will even recognize it in the word Gamol, meaning old or worn out, or the uh, German uh, Gamlik. Um, some of you may also recall the character, uh, the character Gamling, which was a, an elderly man of Rohan, who was the leader of the Watchers of Helm's Dyke. His name means old man. So that may be a very easy way, just a trick, to remember the neo adjective Gamil. Lu, amma ze, besen men ni alabakam, ramek men mal, tada men mat. Here we see one of the forms of no we've seen in the previous lesson, a variation of it um, being uh, lu, which is the exclamation no. In this line, we omit the verb to be yet again, as is the norm in such lines, literally saying we first, meaning we are uh, or were first. In this line, we see besen min and mek min, meaning you walk and you address all both um, in a disrespectful conjugation of the perfect form. And the last part of what DC says here has another disrespectful form, tadan men, meaning you wait. Now, the element must is the word mat, which is placed after the conjugated verb. It's just a little particularity one must simply remember when using the word must. Egelma niaksar, megelma mat, tirak brori, tadan men mat. It seems Master Filin is the only one of the group that is still using the respectful form at this stage. Using the we forms, as we've seen, can be placed uh, in a disrespectful variant. It's not possible, seeing that it only applies to the second person forms. By the way, note the word for anger, which is aksar, as we'll soon find it on our path again, be it in a somewhat slightly different form. Oh, strike my last comment from the record. The gloves are off for Master Filin too, it seems, as he uses the disrespectful form tadan main, meaning you wait. Very unheard of for a shopkeeper uh, using such a tone against your customers. Then again, Master Brody and his brother aren't the most pleasant of customers. Kevra! Ah, here is the reason I asked you to remember the word for anger, which was aksar. This word, kezrar, is in fact a variation of that word. Notice the same radicals, kzr, kezrar, meaning supreme anger or outrage. The form used here is called the augmentative. Not really important at this stage in the lessons though, and we'll see it later in much more detail, but it's a form used to express strong emotions. Mesemi zaimama zamana. This really is a jewel of a line. Uh, apart from the fact that we are treated to the delightful voice of Drori, we see how compact, or to use the proper terminology, how synthetic Neokuzdul is. 
as three words basically convey the same message nine words need to convey in English. And furthermore, the word Mazam Zamana indicates that the they we are talking about are females. Uh, information that can't be deducted from the English line at all. The conjugation in this line is a normal perfect form, uh, I marvel, being mesem me, mesem being the base of the verb to marvel, which incidentally is also the word for jewel. It seems our old friend Dwalin seems to have been promoted a few times in his later life, being called Uzbat or Lord, now by Drori. To be fair, Tolkien did state that Dwalin reached the incredible age of 340, which is nearly a hundred years more than most dwarves would live to in the Third Age, and even those would be considered old. So I wouldn't rule out an Uzbat title for this old campaigner. The conjugation Zakalata consists of two parts, the element za, which is a future marker, easily translated by the words will or shall, and kalata, which is the third person masculine form of to hear, meaning he hears. Natana Felbominin Adranma. Oh dear. Disrespectful forms left, right and center at this stage, it seems. Febelmenin meaning you waste, directed at a group of females, is an e-type, as you can see, febel being the base of the perfect form. Uh, we add menin to indicate uh, the disrespectful plural female second person. So basically a way of saying you to a group of females in a disrespectful manner. Binrazmul, karama mamuzum. The element bin in the word bin rasmul is identical to the word without or uh, the English prefixes un or dis, as in unbelievable or disrespectful, uh, which indicate an opposite or absence of something. So also the word muzm, meaning rude, is similar to an adverb we've passed in a previous line, which was mismal, uh, meaning rudely. Now, I won't go into detail on adverbs in this lesson, but I just wanted to point out that these words use the same radicals, being M, Z, M, which we see in the words for brute or rudeness or even wild beast. Hmm, I fear it may be just a tad too late for that, Master Feeling. Notice the word for friends being buha and friendship being ba. Note, though, a close friendship or love could also be called amral, though that really f refers more to love itself, any form of love for that matter, um, not necessarily romantic love. Wow, that uh, Drori character really sounds more and more like an evil dwarf each time you hear him. A nasty character, to say the least. Iglibi ma means speak not. It's an imperative form, as if you would order someone not to speak. Then, um, uh, they being to me. Tesek minim, ya akragma. Note the difference here between the perfect base tesek, meaning to, to toy, and what we saw earlier, tesak, uh, to use or play with a toy, tesak being the noun as well for toy. Well, it seems that, uh, Una, the shopkeeper's wife, has had quite enough of this. Apart from seeing another disrespectful form being uh, the main at the end of Tesek Main, notice also that we have two forms here of the word Adran being time. Uh, one combines it with a pronoun we, making it Adran Ma, or uh, in fact our, so our time. Uh, the other is Adranu, me, which means time of. This uh, something of construction is called the construct form. Uh, you've guessed it, not something for now, but more on that in future lessons. Cool! Kesra! Zaman Staffi! Nani! Makamzu! Gagin! There's that word again, Kesra, supreme anger or outrage. The word ne is translated as never or don't. It basically is a negative particle used with injunctions or other non-real expressions. It negates hypotheticals, so basically things that would happen or might happen or haven't happened yet. So it's uh, the negative form of those instances. Uh, we notice here that Brody clearly seems to believe that the shop is owned by Master Feeling, as he uses Zoo, the male singular version, when he says Bakam Zoo, meaning your shop. Oh, namhal, mach bakam in mabak bulash kadmezun zee. 
Well, that seems to close it for Master Feeling 2. Namhal literally means in the event, and it takes on the meaning in that case. So, uh, otherwise, we see uh, two pretty long, somewhat scary words in this line. Uh, but trust me when I say you actually already met them before, or at least parts of them in somewhat different form. Mach Bakameen translates as you pay, the disrespectful form in the perfect tense. Um, it basically consists of three elements. Mach, literally make or create. And then secondly, Bakam, which uses the radicals B, K, M. Uh, you might recall we use those radicals for concepts such as shop, customers, uh, or to buy. And lastly, the main element, which we know by now, is the dis disrespectful conjugation for the plural male form uh, in the perfect. Um, you might recall Bakama, which was he or it buys. Well, by placing a mah before the verb, we create he or it pays. So mah bakama is uh, he, uh, literally, he makes buy, he, he, he pays, um, to pay. Um, so this ma element is something we've glanced at in previous lesson. It's called an allied verb, though it will uh, will save it for uh, a bit more detailed information in a, a later lesson. Now the second word ma bak mul ashkad mizu, which is quite a mouthful, consists of three elements. Uh, firstly, the ma uh, bak mul, which means that which is bought or a purchase. Um, note again the BKM radicals returning here. Secondly, ashkad, which means depth, and finally, mezu, which is the disrespectful form of zu, meaning your. Um, when directed to a uh, female, it would be mezi. As a result, we get the words your purchase depth, or translated loosely, your outstanding bill. Zor torome, inkir broli, zibar Well, goodbye and good riddance, I hope. Now let's take a closer look at what Drori is saying here. Zur is how, and Torun me is the disrespectful form of to dare, for the second person singular, meaning you dare. Fun fact, and an easy way to remember the radicals for this verb, for to, to dare, uh, is thinking of the name Thorin. In Old Norse, Thorin means brave or daring one. Take the consonants of the name Thorin and hey presto, you've got the neo radicals for the concept of daring or bravery. Lastly, Master Drori here offers a threat to both shopkeepers, addressing them in the plural disrespectful, as you can see here by the main at the end of Zabira Shagam main, meaning you will regret. <laughs> Burush Ruka Igbulul E is a very polite apology. It literally means it pains me greatly. Let's have a closer look at some of the words in this line. Nadat Hu, consisting of the words Nadat, brother, and Hu, his, make his brother. Note, brother is either Nadat or Karm. Uh, both are acceptable, though the latter is perhaps more acceptable referring to kinsmen in general. Makahon, an a type perfect verb, meaning they, the males, have found. And note again, bakam ma, clearly pronouncing both m's in this word, meaning our shop. Tari kematai ni aksar, tada kasat huhun. Kematai, now that's an interesting one, let's have a closer look. The base of this transitive verb form is kemat. Um, if you are wondering how I know in the blink of an eye that this is a transitive verb, you may want to head back into the transitive verb info earlier in this uh, video. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll refresh your mind a bit. It's the E and A vowel in this base. A kemat is a, uh, a voice, if you want to say she uses her voice, we say uh, kematai, uh, we simply add I, which is the third person female conju conjugation in the perfect tense. Further in this line, we see the word anger once more, which is aksar, 
and a little uh, flashback to lesson one with the adjective huhut, meaning wrong. Do you remember the word for uh, rude, muzum? And here we see they were rude as muzumon. On is the third person male plural form as we've seen in lesson one. I hope, a genie, a person, uh, a normal I type imperfect form as seen in lesson two, uh, we add a before the base and I after the base. Uh, if some of these rules are a bit fuzzy, there's absolutely no shame in that. Merely head back to lesson two and take that class again. And then there is a very long word which is jala takraki, which means it will suffer. If we break up this word in smaller chunks, we get the particle za, which is a future marker, as we've seen before, which we can now translate as, uh, which we can translate as will or shall. Then there is the element jala, which is an allied verb, meaning it changes the meaning of takraki. Uh, without going into too much detail on allied verbs, Takraki means it or he tortures, and the element jala changes that meaning into it or he suffers. This isn't the first time we've heard this phrase. Masaksham yazud means you should not worry or worry not. The ma element in front is the negator, meaning not, while the zud element after the verb means ought to, should, or must. Uh, here we see the verb to pay again, now in the uh, plural third person male form, as ma uh, bakamon. Remember, bakamon is the um, form they buy, while ma bakamon is they pay. Note that the conjugation seen here is not the disrespectful form, even though they are talking about the root brothers, Bruri and Dorori. The reason you may recall is that the impolite form is always a second person form. If dwarves insult people, we have the courage to do it in one's face. Hence, you will only find a disrespectful form in the second person, meaning all forms of you, whether it's plural, singular, male, or female. Remember the word for order? Uh, yes, the word akag. We've seen it a few times in this, uh, in the lines of this lesson already, including a few variations like akag ma, meaning our order. Here we see the plural uh, being gakak. Uh, it means orders. Adding the, plur the pronoun ist at the end, making it gakakist, or their orders. More on how plurals are formed, however, in future lessons. Shumusi isnu. Shumusi, as you can notice, is a U-type perfect form. Seeing one girl is being addressed here, we use the singular female ending si, as opposed to the male variant su. Isnu is the accusative form of the male they. Now for a moment, um, if you want to not think about these pronouns we've seen so far, I think that might be best. I mean, it's good to know them. Uh, bit by bit, but we'll spend more on that in a dedicated lesson. So if you are confusing is, is, nu, zu, zi, asnu, ma, and all those kind of pronouns, don't worry. That's perfectly normal at this stage. We'll see them all in uh, greater detail later. At last the girls get to uh, say their order. The word uh, kamahasi, by the way, consists of the uh, elements ka, meaning can, and mahasi, meaning we help, which is the first person plural imperfect. Remember from uh, lesson two that we add ma in front of the base and i at the end of the base. So in this case, our base is an a type imperfect being has. This may seem like a peculiar verb base, has, uh, because it only has two radicals. The rule is no different, though, regardless if your base has two or three consonants, radicals, you'll conjugate them in the same manner uh, for about 99% of the time, I would say. Right, that is it for the review of our Lesson 3 dialogue, jam-packed with information, I'd say. Be sure to watch it again if you're not sure about the two concepts we've seen today, being the disrespectful form and the transitive verb form. 
going through this content and the content of the first two lessons a few times really should ensure you build up your understanding of the core concepts of this language. Not only will it help you to learn future concepts uh, with more ease, building up uh, your core understanding, um, but it will give you the key you need to look at lines of dialogue in the upcoming lessons and grasp more and more of them as we proceed. Now, as with our previous two lessons, we'll now cover the runes of the Kuzlu alphabets. Uh, note again, like in the earlier version, we are focusing on Erebor style runes. Uh, today we'll see the third part of the standard alphabet. L Lal Lal, the clear L, as in the English word let or lean or love. An example of a neo kuzlu word that contains the rune Lal in today's lesson is ala, meaning this. Mi. M. Mm. Identical to the M we see in English words like more, mouse or man, an example of a word that starts with Mi is Muzum, meaning rude. The Mi rune is likely one of the most common letters in Neo Kuzdu. Uh, you won't have any trouble finding other examples. Mm. Nibum. Nibum, again, identical to what we see in English, like the words north, nice, or name. Uh, an example of a Neo Kuzdu word that starts with Nibum is the word Ni, meaning in. A word you'll no doubt remember fairly easily, as it's the mirror image of the English word. On, o. Pronounced as the O in the British English variant of shop. Uh, so it's a clear O, not influenced uh, by other sounds, nor does it need to be extended, uh, so prolonged. A word containing this letter on is going to be a challenge, as it's rather rare in Kuzdu. An example, though, is in the word gatol, meaning fortress. O. Oh. The extended variant of this on rune is sigin on, literally meaning long on or long o. It is a sound you may find in specific English dialects. An example of this is makahon in Neokuzlu, meaning they found. In this example, the on ending is typical for the third person male in the perfect form, as seen in lesson one. Other than that, the O sound is a rare sound in Kuzlu compared to other vowels. An important note about this rune though is that it has another variant in the Moria style Kirt, as you can see shown here in the smaller runes. The next dwarfish rune is Rarur. The way this rune is pronounced is largely dependent on the region of origin of the clan of the dwarf. Some western clans may pronounce this like R. Scottish R, while others may pronounce it as R, a French R, though it's never pronounced as a soft R, the American R. An example of a word uh, starts with Rarur is Ra, meaning and. Another frequent rune is Sasus, which we see in words as Sigin meaning long. The pronunciation of this rune s, is identical to the sound in English of words like salt, sound and safe. Note that the rune sasus is in fact the vertically flipped nibum, so instead of facing up like nibum, sasus faces down. And the last rune of this segment for today's lesson is shashum, the same sound as seen in the English word sheep, shop or shawl. A neokuzl word starting with this rune, as seen in our lesson, is shumusi, meaning you flatter, you the singular female form. Right, that will do uh, for our third segment of runes. In this, in the next lesson, the last segment of these standard runes will be covered. As usual, we'll wrap up today's lesson with a review of concepts, radicals, and words seen. Now, the transitive verb form, when do we use it? We use it if we wish to indicate we are using an instrument or a tool. It can be used in the perfect, used to state dependable facts, or the imperfect, used to describe vivid actions. How is it formed? Well, for the perfect, we re replace the base radicals with an E and an A. 
for the imperfect, we replace the base radical with an E, so the vowels in those base radicals, to be clear. This turns a standard perfect or imperfect structure into the transitive perfect or transitive imperfect. For instance, I am hewing. I am using a hewer. Or, I have hewed. I have used a hewer. Handy fact, not all verbs have a transitive variant. Those that do tend to be E-type verbs in the perfect. The second concept we've covered today is the disrespectful form. When is it used? Well, we address when we address others directly, not when talking about others, about yourself or your own group. In other words, it can be used for all forms of you, regardless if it's singular, plural, male or female. In this lesson, we've seen how it applies to the perfect and perfect transitive form, but it can also apply to the imperfect, uh, which also has similar conjugations but more on that in later lessons. The endings of the disrespectful form for the perfect and perfect transitive form are me, many, me, many. As we can see here, showing clearly the difference with the polite forms. Very well, now let's recap some of the radical structures seen in our lesson today. G, k, k, akak, order gakak orders a uh, d d adad father sigin adad grandfather irak adad uncle k z r aksar anger Kizrar, outrage. M, z, m. Muzum, rude. Mizmao, rudely. Mama zamana, they who continue to be rude. T, s, k. Tesak, a toy. Tesak mean, you, plural, disrespectful male. Toy. As in the verb. Tisak menin, you, directed at uh, plural females, and in the disrespectful, play with a toy. B, k, m, buying or paying. Um, bakam, which is shop. Bakama, he or it buys. Upkam, a customer. Mah bakamien, you must pay, and in this case, Plural male, disrespectful. There, and that will indeed conclude our third lesson. In closing, I would like to remind everyone of the tools, exercises, and documents that have been made available freely via the dwarvescholar.com site. Do check that out. In addition, you'll also find plenty of other dwarvish related material there, such as the Annals of the Dwarves, which is a free fan fiction based on Tolkien's long history of his bearded delvers. In addition to that, plugins for Lotro. So if you wish to speak Dwarvish in Lord of the Rings Online, then by all means download the free easy use plugins. Then there is loads more planned for future months, so regularly check out dwarvishcon.com for updates, new Dwarvish free downloads. Lastly, for all of you that can't wait for lesson 4 and want to be able to speak this language, listen up now as this may be your chance. Via Patreon, I have started a project to start a new, completely new interactive class. Now, not only will you get the chance to learn in an entirely different way, but it will be much more hands-on, with direct dialogue, starting at the most basic level, slowly working ourselves up to a more fluent level, including regular one-on-one -on -one Q and A sessions with myself. To make this class a reality, though, I do need support. Join me as uh, my patron and get some exclusive goodies, including early access to these kind of videos. Uh, don't miss that via patreon.com slash dwarrenscholar or just head to dwarrenscholar.com and click support me. A few words of thanks before uh, I say goodbye. Uh, let's see. Well, I wish to thank my fantastic patrons, obviously, for their support, feedback and enthusiasm. Without them, much of what I do now and 
our uh, planning will not be possible and would not have been possible. And a big thanks to the voice talents uh, of this lesson, being Rokna, Amli, Becca, Joe and Simone heard in this lesson. Uh, and that would be it. Thank you all. Uh, it was a joy hosting another of these lessons. Goodbye and shabuk.